The idea of meeting someone who says they're from space is pretty cool, right? But when you dive into their stories, things can get a bit creepy. I've put together a bunch of stories and personal accounts about these so-called aliens. These tales are about people who claim they come from way beyond Earth. 20. Valiant Thor Has the name Valiant Thor ever crossed your path? Well, let me tell you about a wild story from 1957. This guy Thor, who claimed he was from Venus, landed on Earth. He said he came to share some wisdom and warn us about how dangerous the Cold War could get. His adventures on Earth are something out of a movie. He even had a serious chat at the Pentagon. And get this, he talked with President Eisenhower and Vice President Nixon about how to achieve world peace and dodge nuclear war. This incredible tale came to us thanks to Dr. Frank Strangers, a guy deeply interested in religion and mysteries. He met Thor in 1959. Thor, proving he wasn't from around here, gave Strangers a piece of cloth from space and talked about spiritual stuff, highlighting how important it is to respect God, as understood in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Years here, Thor didn't just kick back and relax. He was busy talking to US leaders, pushing for the use of advanced technology and a bigger focus on spiritual growth. He lived in a simple apartment in Alexandria, Virginia, sticking to his mission of spreading peace. When Thor went back to Venus, he left us thinking. He showed us a glimpse of a future where we, Earthlings, could team up with beings from other planets. It's a story that really makes you wonder about our place in the universe and how we're all connected. 19. Heaven's Gate Group Marshall Applewhite, born in Texas in 1931, took a wild ride from being a gifted musician to calling himself a messenger from space. He had a master's in music and once dreamed of being a singer in New York. Instead, he ended up teaching music at the University of Alabama and then leading a music department in Houston. But everything changed for him in 1972 after he met Bonnie Nettles, a nurse who was really into spiritual stuff and old prophecies. They hit it off and started believing they were the special messengers talked about in the Book of Revelation. This belief led them to start the Heaven's Gate group, with Applewhite and Nettles leading the charge as otherworldly guides. They traveled all over, telling people that Earth was about to be recycled and that they needed to leave this world to reach a higher plane of existence. After Nettles passed away in 1985, Applewhite took full control, even saying he was a new version of Christ, inspired by Nettles' spirit. The appearance of the Hale-Bopp comet in 1997 was a big deal for Applewhite. He was sure it signaled the time for their big exit to space, believing a spaceship hiding behind the comet was waiting to take them to a new level of being. bizarre stories, let's talk about something that happened in July 1954 at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. This guy walks in, beard and all, looking like he's from Europe, and he's got a passport from a place called Torrid. Now the twist is, Torrid doesn't actually exist. It's supposed to be somewhere between France and Spain, but nobody's heard of it. Despite his legit-looking passport, stuffed with stamps, and his bag full of different European money, no one could make heads or tails of his story. When the officials dug a little deeper, trying to check the hotel he said he booked, the company he was supposed to meet with, and even his bank, they came up empty. No trace. Things got even weirder when, after they put him in a hotel room with guards outside, he just vanished. Poof. Gone. Along with all his mysterious paperwork. This whole episode got people talking about all sorts of wild ideas, like parallel worlds and time travel. It's a story that leaves you with more questions than answers, making you wonder about the things we don't know or understand. Now there's this lady named Elizabeth Clara, all the way from South Africa, who's got a tale that'll make your jaw drop. In the 1950s, she shared an unbelievable adventure about falling in love with an alien 
Archon, and even having a child with him. This all started in 1956 on a hill in Natal. That's where she ran into Akon's spaceship. Despite the heat coming off it, she went closer and started an unbelievable adventure. Akon took her to his huge spaceship, which was like a garden in space. He told her they were meant to be together forever, and even suggested Elizabeth's roots were connected to Venus. Their love story grew on Kathkin Peak, and they decided to start a family with a child they named Ailing. Elizabeth's story got even more incredible when she visited Meton, Akon's perfect world in the Alpha Centauri star system. It was a dreamlike place with no cities, where everyone lived in peace and didn't need money. Elizabeth explained that time worked differently there. Four months on Earth felt like nine years on Meton. She wrote a book called Beyond the Light Barrier, where she tells her story of cosmic romance, offering thoughts on life, peace, and taking care of our planet. Sheffield Bridge. In 1969, the Reed family had an unusual experience with a UFO over the Sheffield Bridge in Massachusetts. Tom Reed, who was only nine years old, saw some weird lights and balls of light, with one even touching the water. Suddenly, their car and a disc-shaped object made a triangle shape, lighting up everything around them with a loud noise that sounded like an animal, before everything went quiet and dark. When they came to, they realized they had lost a few hours and could only remember bits and pieces of being in a big room. This event caused a lot of talks and made life tough for the Reed family as people were skeptical and didn't always believe them. It also deeply changed how Tom Reed saw the world. Many years later, in 2015, the experience of the Reed family was officially recognized as an important historical event by the Great Barrington Historical Society. This led to the creation of the Tom Reed UFO Monument Park. Tom Reed keeps an open mind about what happened, considering it could be related to aliens or something else. This open-mindedness reflects the history and nature of the area around where the event happened. 15. Boris Kiprianovich. Extraordinary stories come in all shapes and sizes, and Boris Kiprianovich, or Boriska, from Volgograd, Russia, has one that sounds like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie, Born on January 11, 1996, Boris wasn't like other kids. Imagine a baby starting to speak at four months and having the focus of an adult while still in diapers. That's Boris for you. He's always been obsessed with space, especially Mars, without anyone teaching him about it. It's as if he had a direct line to something beyond what we usually know. When he was just seven, during a camping trip, Boris began sharing this wild story about his past life on Mars. His tale got so popular that it ended up in Pravda, a big Russian newspaper. By the time he was 11, Boris was talking to Project Camelot, sharing memories of a Martian civilization that destroyed itself with war and nuclear weapons. He called himself an indigo child, someone reborn on Earth, to help us avoid Mars's fate. He even talked about ancient secrets hidden under the Great Sphinx in Egypt and survivors from Mars with hidden knowledge. Fast forward to today, Boris is 27 and it's like he's disappeared. Some say he's living a quiet life under the radar, possibly watched by the government or just blending into the crowd in Moscow. Even though he stepped back from being in the public eye, there are still whispers about him being okay, shared through psychic messages. 13. Vinny O. Oh. Probably you've heard about Vinny O from Los Angeles, right? Let me break it down for you. Vinny is not your average person. Starting at 17, Vinny began a huge change, getting into plastic surgery to make their outside look like how they feel on the inside. But Vinny's goal isn't just to change. They're aiming to go beyond what we usually think of as human, 
wanting to look like an alien and moving past usual ideas of gender and sexuality. Vinny's adventure into the extraordinary started with getting their lips done and led to a bunch of surgeries like nose jobs, making their cheeks and brow bones stand out more, skin treatments, and even this thing where they freeze their face with cold treatments. These aren't just for looks, they're a big statement about who Vinny is, someone without a gender or sex, feeling more connected to the stars than to any box society might want to put them in. The amount of money Vinny has spent on this transformation is jaw-dropping, over $50,000. But for Vinny, it's not about the money, it's about being who they really are. As Vinny keeps going on this path, their story really makes you think about how far someone would go to show the world their true self. What do you think about Vinny's incredible journey to become something beyond what we usually see as human? 12. Nina Kulagina Now let's dive into the story of Nina Kulagina, a name many know in the world of psychic stuff. Born in 1926, her life story takes a fascinating path. She starts off in the Red Army's tank regiment during World War II and later becomes a housewife. But there's a twist. She becomes known for something entirely different, her psychic abilities. The Soviet Union got really interested in her supposed ability to move objects without touching them, what some call psychokinesis. For about 20 years, they studied her closely, trying to figure out how she did what she did. In the 1960s, she became a bit of a sensation. There were these silent, black-and-white films showing her moving objects without any physical touch under strict conditions set by Soviet officials. These films caught the eye of psychic researchers all over the world, making her quite the international mystery. People couldn't help but wonder if she had some kind of supernatural powers. Of course, not everyone was convinced some people thought her abilities were just tricks, maybe using magnets or hidden threads. But there were plenty of others who really believed in her powers, thinking maybe she had some kind of cosmic energy or something out of this world. 11. Alex Collier. Alex Collier, let's talk about this guy. Well, he wasn't always Alex Collier. Nope, he used to go by Ralph Amigron. Crazy, huh? Alex has a background as a US soldier, but what he's really known for is something way out there. He says he's been in touch with aliens from the Andromeda Galaxy. Yes, you heard that right. Alex's adventure into this wild unknown started when he was just a kid in 1964, but he didn't tell anyone about his experiences until 1989. He talks about being taken to a huge spaceship from Andromeda. Even though he felt like he was there for 92 days, on Earth, only 18 minutes had passed. Alex sees this as a huge honor. On this spaceship, which he says was huge, like 900 meters long, and had 24 levels with all sorts of things, including a big park that could simulate sunrise, he met all kinds of beings from Andromeda. There was this really old, short one, and another young one, who was very tall with deep blue skin. Alex's stories about what he saw and did on this spaceship really make you think. The ship was so big inside, it seemed impossible. He's told his story many times, and it always gets people talking. Some believe him, some don't, but either way, it's a fascinating story that makes you wonder about what's out there in the stars. 10. Billy Meyer If you have ever heard of Billy Meyer, this guy from Switzerland, born in a place called Bulach on February 3rd, 1937, has quite the story. His life took a wild turn when he was just five years old. Maya's ordinary world got flipped upside down because he started meeting beings from outer space. His first contact was with Svath, an older alien who could talk to him directly in his mind. Svath even took young Billy on trips through space in a pear-shaped spaceship. These early experiences were like his training for a special job he was meant to do later, preparing him for a path filled with mysteries. Throughout his life, 
Maya kept meeting these extraterrestrial beings. One of them was Ascot, a female alien who taught him a lot for more than ten years. But Billy's stories aren't just about these meetings. He also talks about traveling through time and seeing important historical events with his own eyes. These incredible stories made him feel left out when he was younger, attracting doubts and jokes from others. But no matter how hard it got, Maya never stopped wanting to share what he learned from his talks with aliens. He took careful notes on over 24,000 of these conversations and put them all together to share with others. People still argue about whether his experiences were real, but there's no denying that Billy Meyer's life story keeps a lot of us wondering and asking questions. 9. Dean Lindsay Speaking of being way ahead of his time, Dean Lindsay was on a whole other level in 1936. While everyone else was busy with down-to-earth stuff, Lindsay was shooting for the stars, literally. He decided that the universe was his to claim, calling it A.D. Lindsay's Archipelago. And this wasn't his first rodeo. He'd already tried to claim the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans before. How did he do it? He simply went to the local superior court, filed some papers, and paid some fees, making his bold claims official, even though most people thought the idea of owning bits of outer space was just crazy. Jump to 2015, and things started to look a bit different when President Obama signed a law that let people claim resources from asteroids. Suddenly, there were big talks about whether it's right or wrong to own stuff in space. This law made Lindsay's actions way back seem not so far-fetched after all, highlighting our deep desire to explore, dream, and stake our claim in the unknown. 8. George Adamski George Adamski jumps right out of the stories of UFOs from the 1940s and 1950s, becoming a well-known, though controversial, figure in the world of alien encounter stories. Unlike others who just talked about seeing UFOs from afar, Adamski went all out. He told stories about meeting friendly aliens who looked a lot like humans from Northern Europe, going on trips in their spaceships to the moon and other places, and he even showed off pictures of what he said were their ships. These stories weren't just for fun. Adamski was serious about proving he had these out-of-this-world connections. He wrote several books about his adventures in space, catching the interest of people who love UFO stories and sparking discussions everywhere. Adamski's tales spread beyond just UFO enthusiasts. He became a leading figure in the Space Brother movement, which is all about living in peace with beings from other planets. But not everyone was convinced by Adamski's stories. While he had many followers who believed every word he said, there were plenty of people who were into UFOs but skeptical of his claims. They worried that his over-the-top stories might make people doubt the serious work being done to research UFOs. With all the controversy surrounding him, it leaves you wondering... Could there be some truth to Adamski's incredible stories, or are they just made-up adventures? 7. The Pyramids of Egypt Now, in a place like ancient Egypt, which existed from around 3150 BC to 30 BC, there are stories that could even give Cleopatra a run for her money. This time in history was filled with incredible achievements, like the amazing pyramids that show just how advanced the Egyptians were in building things. And get this, they absolutely loved cats, treating them like holy animals. So, if you're into cats, ancient Egypt would have been your kind of paradise. But it wasn't just about big buildings and cats. The ancient Egyptians were ahead of their time in many areas, including art, culture, how society was organized, farming techniques, and medicine. They were also pretty smart when it came to keeping peace, drafting what's known as the First Peace Treaty. The pyramids, especially the Sphinx, still grab our attention and make people wonder how they were built. Some like to joke that aliens must have helped, but it was really the Egyptians' own cleverness and creative thinking that did the trick. Their accomplishments are like hidden treasures under the desert sand, making us want to dig deeper and learn more about their secrets. 6. 
Claude Maurice Marcel Vorilon. Let's talk about Claude Maurice Marcel Vorilon, but you might know him as Rael. His story mixes sci fi excitement with big predictions about the future. Before he became famous as the leader of the Raelian movement, Rael was all about fast cars and the thrilling races. But in 1973, everything changed for him. He says he met beings from another world, called the Elohim. Rael describes these beings as advanced scientists who had a hand in creating life on Earth by tweaking DNA, going back around 25,000 years. His story takes a different path from what most religions say. He suggests that the start of humanity and events like the Garden of Eden were actually parts of a huge experiment by aliens. According to these beings, Rael's job was to share their message and help prepare for their comeback. This includes building an embassy on neutral ground, not owned by any country. He wrote a book, Extraterrestrials Took Me to Their Planet, where he talks about visiting other worlds and chatting with important religious figures, laying the groundwork for the Raelian movement. This group believes that extraterrestrials started life on Earth, making Rael an important messenger for their teachings from the stars. 5. Betty and Barney Hill Now touching upon the fascinating story of Betty and Barney Hill, a tale that's a big deal in the world of UFO stories. So back in September 1961, this couple from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, had a strange experience. They were just coming back from their honeymoon in Montreal and Niagara Falls, driving through the White Mountains when things got weird. They saw something in the sky that night, an object with flashing lights, moving in a way they'd never seen before. Betty grabbed binoculars and saw it spinning, while Barney, who usually didn't believe in such things, couldn't believe his eyes when he saw a huge, saucer-shaped thing up close, right above the trees. He got curious and got a closer look, but freaked out when he saw figures in uniforms inside it. They hurried back to their car, but then heard strange beeping sounds and suddenly felt lost, later realizing they couldn't remember driving a whole 35 miles. After this encounter, they noticed their clothes and car were strangely damaged, and they felt physically odd. Looking for answers, they tried hypnosis, and that's when they shared stories of being taken by creatures with grey skin onto the spacecraft, examined, and then released. These stories under hypnosis added all the details about the beings and what happened, making the Hill story a classic in UFO encounters talked about even today. 4. Simon Parks Meet Simon Parks, a guy who used to help run the town of Whitby in England, dealing with everyday stuff like fixing leaks and filling potholes. But Simon's not your average former city worker. He's got a story that's way out there. Since he was a baby, Simon says he's been hanging out with aliens. Yes, you heard that right. He talks about meeting a giant alien, nine feet tall with eight fingers, who he thinks is his real mom, and they chat using only their thoughts. When he was 11, he claims he was on a spaceship, and he even says he has a child with an alien he calls the Cat Queen. He shares these wild tales in interviews and through his work with a group that helps people who say they've met aliens. Despite how crazy it sounds, Simon insists that his out-of-this-world experiences never got in the way of his job in the city council. His stories make the usual political chat a lot more interesting, kind of like Paul Hellyer from Canada, who was a big-shot defense minister and also talks about aliens. Simon's life mixes everyday political stuff with incredible stories about UFOs and space beings. 3. Pharaoh Akhenaten What comes to mind when you think of ancient Egypt? Pyramids, hieroglyphs, mummies, right? Well, let's dive into the intriguing world of Pharaoh Akhenaten, one of ancient Egypt's most fascinating leaders whose story is full of unanswered questions. Akhenaten looked different from other pharaohs. Instead of the strong, perfect-looking figures we're used to, he was shown with a long head, big almond-shaped eyes, and a body shape that was unusual. 
This difference has made people come up with all sorts of ideas, from thinking it was a new artistic style to guessing he had a rare genetic condition. Some even suggest he might have come from somewhere beyond Earth, linking him to the stars. Now let's talk about King Tutankhamun's Space Dagger. Found in his tomb loaded with treasures by Howard Carter in 1925, this dagger is a real head-scratcher. It was made from a type of metal that didn't come from our planet, but from a meteorite, making it a piece of the stars right here in ancient Egypt. This was a big deal because it was way before Egypt started using iron. Modern science has shown that the dagger's metal, full of nickel and matching the composition of a meteorite found in Egypt, adds a bit of a space mystery to King Tut's story. 2. Ashtar Galactic Command Well, I don't know if you've heard about this thing called the Ashtar Galactic Command. This group, or maybe we can call them a cosmic team, has been sharing messages with people for a while now. The whole thing started with George Van Tassel, back in 1952. At first, their messages seemed to push us to get better at science, without getting too deep into mystical stuff. But then, things took a turn towards the spiritual. Their messages started sounding more like the teachings of spiritual leaders, blending deep spiritual ideas with their messages from space. One of the biggest moments was in 1977, when the airwaves in the UK got hijacked by a message from someone named Vrion, talking all about peace. It was a moment that moved the conversation from everyday topics to something more profound. Over the years, what the Ashtar Galactic Command talked about shifted. They moved from stories about aliens visiting in their spaceships to talking more about how we can grow spiritually and evolve. Even though they've made some predictions that didn't come true and faced some internal issues, their followers are still passionate about spreading their message of transformation. 1. Howard Menger We all started hearing about Howard Menger's incredible journey when he was just 10 years old. He met Svath, who he said was from a place called Pleiades, while he was wandering in the woods of New Jersey. This meeting kicked off a whole lifetime of adventures with beings he called the Space Brothers, turning Howard into a well-known figure in the UFO world by the late 1950s. Howard would tell anyone who'd listen about his chats, meetups, and even rides in spaceships with these visitors from Venus. He mixed in talks of space friendship and deep wisdom from these aliens. As he learned more, his stories grew to include trips beyond Venus and Mars, talking about traveling across the galaxy. He started mixing in ideas about spirituality, how we're all connected in the universe, and how humans are growing and changing. Some UFO fans were skeptical, not buying his tales. Yet many people were drawn to what Howard had to say, finding something special in the mix of outer space adventures and spiritual lessons, especially those curious about UFOs and the bigger messages he was sharing. Have you ever met someone who says they're from outer space and it totally blows your mind? I want to hear about those crazy encounters. And keep your eyes peeled, because who knows what other spooky stories are out there waiting to be uncovered on this creepy journey we're on.